Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Sheila Cohen. I'm the president of the Connecticut Education Association, and I'm a classroom teacher. With me here at the podium are three other classroom teachers who are also officers of the Connecticut Education Association. Jeff Leak, our CEA vice president, Pat Jordan, our CEA secretary, Tom Nicholas, our CEA treasurer, also with us today is Executive Director Mark Waxenberg and our Research Specialist Ray Rosamondo. Our state should be able to provide to our students the very best, reliable, and fair testing system available to help influence great teaching and learning in our public schools for all students, regardless of their zip code. And there must be evidence that the testing is fair and that the results are valid. There is consensus in this state about what constitutes the very best in a statewide testing program. It should never take time away from learning and burden students with endless hours of test prep. It should enable teachers to target instruction to individual students' needs. It should enable educators to make sound curriculum and professional development decisions. And it should inform parents to understand what their child knows and is able to do. Now everyone, including the State Education Commissioner and other public school stakeholders, agrees on these basic criteria for sound testing. However, Based on our study of the current testing program, these criteria are not being met, and the results from the new SVAC test given to all third through eighth grade students in Connecticut are likely not a valid indicator of student knowledge. This analysis, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be ignored. These results come from teachers who have incomparable first-hand knowledge of what kind of programs will help children succeed and what kind of programs will hurt our students. In fact, unfairly stand in their way of becoming lifelong learners. The State Department of Education announced last Friday that it is making SBAC results available to school districts. As Connecticut parents receive their child's test results, the advice from teachers is to examine the results with caution, with significant caution, and to look to valid measures of student learning, valid measures such as frequent progress monitoring, student portfolios, classroom teacher developed assessments, and teacher observations. State lawmakers took a giant step in the right direction this year by eliminating SBAC in the 11th grade. They also authorized the new Mastery Examination Committee to recommend testing improvements, including alternatives to SBAC. Yesterday, we sent a letter to State Education Commissioner Diana Wenzel, and based on the results from Dr. Stemmler's study, we respectfully are asking her to convene the committee immediately. We are on a timeline. We want to start as soon as possible. And such action is necessary for the best interest of children, teachers, and public education here in Connecticut. I will now turn to my colleague, CEA Executive Director Mark Waxenberg, for further comment, and then we will answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. You know, children uh, in our state have been taking tests for decades, if not longer. Uh, as a teacher, we've been giving them. As a students, we've been taking them. And all parents and teachers want from those tests is to show what their child knows and what their child needs to learn. Parents expect, they expect the test to be fair and to be given reliable results. Unfortunately, that expectation is not being met according to the classroom teachers across Connecticut. What this study is stating is that this test is especially unfair for younger students, students from low-income families, 
students who need special accommodations, and students without regular computer access at home. <coughs> we have now had two years of SBAC testing in Connecticut, and the issues of fairness and reliability remain. It is time to recognize that this test is not the one to use for our students, and the task force should meet and decide on a test that is fair for all students and will yield reliable results for parent and teachers to examine. I want to call your attention to the conclusions of Dr. Stemmer's study. They're on page 20 of the report that you have in your packet, and I'm going to just highlight the three themes for you. First theme to emerge centers relates to the use of computers for the administration of the testing. The results suggest that teachers perceive a non-trivial proportion of students who lack the computer skills to perform successfully on the test. The fact that the medium of test administration may be interfering with students' abilities to demonstrate their knowledge of the content of the test is a major threat to the validity of the test results. Secondly, he cites the major, second major theme to emerge from the data is that SPAC caused extraordinary levels of emotional distress with significant numbers of teachers reporting such. And finally, the third major theme to emerge is that the teachers clearly do not see the benefits of the testing program with the percentages according. In sum, it is clear from this study that the teachers who responded are not convinced of the value of the SBAC test. The data here suggests why this may be so and point to particular problems that may threaten to undermine the validity of test results. Connecticut will not be the first state to reject this test. In fact, there were 32 states that started with SBAC in 2011 and there are 17 remaining. And some of those 17 are reassessing their position. The observations of the classroom teachers are before us. We need to step up and do the right thing for our children and public education and convene the task force that Sheila mentioned in her previous comments. Thank you. Any questions you have, we'll be more than happy to respond to regarding the test and or the research associated with it. Okay, so the, I guess, clarification question. So the results of the SBAC test have not been released widely or publicly yet? To our knowledge, we, we have no knowledge of the release of those results. All we are saying is when those results are released, based on the issue of fairness and the lack thereof for all students, those results must be examined cautiously. And um, there was legislation this year as it relates to the, the panel and then the, the 11th grade. Correct. Recent legislation passed this year and signed by the governor called for the elimination of the SBAC test in the 11th grade and it to be uh, the SAT to be used in its, in its stead, but there's been no decision made for the younger students in our state, grades three through eight, and we are, we are seriously asking for that, that commission that was established in statute to meet and address this issue of fairness and validity of results. So if you scrap the SBAC test, what would you suggest instead? I think that's up for the task force to determine that we are not here to give specific recommendations as much as say what we have found regarding this test and the 21 stakeholders of public education on that task force will make the proper decision we hope for the future. And so you support going to the SAT in 11th grade? Yes, we were part of that task force, we're part of that study group. And we, along with other stakeholders, agreed with that move, yes. What do you think it says about the con if, if the state is to move in the direction of using the SAT for the 11th grade, it 
is that a statement on the confidence the state has in this more balanced 11th graders, or is it more a reflection on the, the burden of testing? Yeah. How I, much testing is being done? I, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, I, I, our discussions at the, at the committee level were exactly as you said at the secondary level. It was the uh, over testing of students at that particular grade and the question of, the, again, the, uh, the uh, validity of the results relative to the, uh, to the test itself. I think one of the major takeaways here is if you read, the, if you read it, this is more of a test of a, child's, a younger child's computer skills than their academic skills, which creates the unfairness associated with it, which obviously leads to questionable results for that test. The study, as you read through it, clearly identifies that as a major issue that needs to be examined by that task force so that we can have all children have a fair opportunity to do their best, and we can then get on with celebrating the successes and dealing with the needs of those children.